In this week's spooky nail tutorial, I'll be showing you how I did these Halloween Horror Nights Universal Monsters themed press-on nails, so please keep watching to see how I did this step by step. So I've got my press-on nails pretty much prepped and shaped here. I use the Wellquin Extra Extra Long Stiletto Nails that I reshape at the bottom just very slightly. If you'd like to see how I do this more in depth, you can watch some of my previous press on nail tutorials. I'll try to link those in the description or in the video here. Those videos will have a full in depth tutorial on sizing, prep, and all that for press on nails. Once we've cleansed with alcohol and removed any dust, we're going to go in with our base color. So I'm using a gray gel polish today, keeping it pretty simple for the base, but I thought this went pretty well with the theme for today, which is going to be a Universal Monsters Halloween Horror Nights themed set, specifically inspired by the Eternal Bloodlines maze. This is an all female maze with the Bride of Frankenstein, and Dracula's daughter and it had a really cool setup and everything. I really enjoyed it at Halloween Horror Nights this year. I'm filming this voiceover um, after I've already gone to Halloween Horror Nights. We go pretty early in the season to do a nail set inspired by one of the houses each year. So this is what I chose for this year and it was a lot of fun to do. So I'm just applying a matte top coat, curing that and removing the sticky layer. You can see that it's got a really nice matte finish now, which is gonna give us a nice smooth, even base for our nail art because we are gonna be doing some more advanced nail art today, but don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through it step by step, and we're gonna break it down, um, like colors, shading, and all of that. I did wanna share with you two products that we're gonna be using pretty frequently today. These are both from Ball Pit Nails. She has really amazing products. She's an amazing artist, and I love all of her content. So I just ordered her white and black liner gels recently because I really needed new ones, and this was my first time trying them, and the consistency is amazing. They're super pigmented, super silky, and easy to use. So we're gonna kick off with a Universal Monsters kind of logo lettering theme on the thumb here. So I'm just taking a long liner brush and just doing a kind of irregular rectangle shape. This is just gonna be kind of the border and then we're gonna do the lettering inside. This is the cleanup brush that I like to use. It's the Acmore 3D brush from Amazon. You can find that on my store, Amazon storefront. That'll be in the description as well. And then we're just taking a small detailer brush and using that white liner gel and we're gonna start writing out universal in very tiny letters. This lettering at the top is pretty basic, so we're just keeping it simple. We're just taking it step by step, breaking down each part of the letter and just trying to keep our hand as stabilized as possible. You'll see that I'm bracing my pinky here and that helps so much with just kind of keeping your hand steady and reducing any shakiness. The Universal Monsters um, logo or like the lettering, whatever the proper word is, is really iconic. So I definitely wanted to recreate that at least on one of the nails. So I chose to do it on the thumb. And remember, you can always flash cure in between so you don't have to do this all in one go. I have a little flash cure lamp that I keep on my desk that I use that I'll show here in a little bit but you definitely wanna make sure you do a full cure at the end as well in your lamp. Now we're gonna write out monsters. So I switched to a five millimeter brush here and we're starting with M. And I like to write out at least part of the letter kind of just in a regular um, style. And then I go ahead and start thickening the lines, adding in those small details at the ends of the nails. I find that that makes it a lot less overwhelming and easier for me to kind of get the style that I'm going for. So you'll see here like, I'll square off the ends of the letters all around the top. So I kind of just take it piece by piece for each letter. The letters for this um, kind of logo are kind of, or at least some of the letters you'll see in the photo that I had up, like the O is very tall and skinny. So you just want to kind of pay attention to some of those proportions and details and try to replicate them as closely as you can. Most of the letters are pretty tall and skinny um, for this logo and also we have to make sure it all fits on the nail. So you'll see that some of the letters like the O are very elongated. Um, so yeah, this S here is a good example of kind of the technique I'm talking about. So I kind of laid down the basic um, just like a very normal S and now I'm going in and adding some thickness to the lines and adding more defined curves and just squaring off the ends. Whatever the style is that we're going for. Um, in my last video for Friday the 13th, um, I did this for the Camp Crystal Lake sign and I kind of showed how I did that with, it was a little bit more of a scripted style handwriting, so adding those details at the end. 
and you'll see that the letters are kind of progressively kind of tunneling in because I chose to do a long almond set. Well, yeah, this is, I would consider this long almond. It's kind of a stiletto and almond combined. Um, it is a longer nail, but it is, um, you know, kind of getting narrow at the end there. So you're gonna have to make the letters a little bit smaller as you keep going if you do decide to go for this style, but everything does fit. So I'm just squeezing in that last letter here. So again, just kind of doing the basic format of the S and then adding in some thicker lines and just really making sure those curves are in there and then kind of squaring off the ends and then fully curing everything. Now I'm mixing some gray gel polish with some top coat just to kind of um, have a little bit more of a jelly consistency because we're gonna add in some shading. I wanted the thumb and this whole nail set to look very gritty. Um, uh, I don't know, it, it's Universal Monsters, right? So you kind of want to have that kind of monster gritty effect. So I added some gray gel polish with top coat and then I went ahead and added some black shading gel. And we're just kind of lightly feathering that in. We don't want to cover up all of the white spaces, um, but we just want to kind of randomly disperse this with a smaller detailer brush. And then I wanted to add some blood effect. So I'm going to use a manicure brush here. Just to, We're just going to use a fresh one. And then we have our red gel polish here on our palette. And I did mix some top coat in here as well. Just again, it gives a little bit more of a transparent effect, which is great to just add in that detail without it kind of overpowering your nail set and covering everything up. It, if you have a jelly red gel polish, that works even better. I just tend to use my top coat for this that I have set aside for. It's just a little bit easier for me if I don't have that jelly color on hand. And then we're just gonna randomly splatter that around with the brush and then top coat it and you're done. So this is how the thumb is looking. I love how the logo turned out. I feel like the blood effect really added a nice touch with the shading. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next nail, which is gonna be Bride of Frankenstein. So when I was looking through like the different houses this year, this was the one that just caught my eye the most. And I, just thought like the characters in it would be super fun to paint and I kind of did a deep dive into like what characters are going to be in it so we have Bride of Frankenstein next so before we draw her we're going to draw kind of a spooky moonlit background so I'm just laying down a white base with a giant white circle and these are the different colors we're going to be kind of just blending in there so I'm taking a blending brush and then taking a mixture of some yellow mixed with a little bit of orange. The white base is just going to help it pop more since we do have a little bit of a darker gel polish. And I do recognize a lot of this is going to get covered up with the character nail art, but I did just want to show it because I feel like it ties into the whole theme of the Eternal Bloodlines. Blood and um, you'll kind of see it all come together once we paint uh, Dracula's Daughter. So we're just gonna go ahead and keep mixing in these colors. This does not need to be perfect at all. This is really just kind of having fun with it and just kind of randomly dispersing the colors. And as we layer the colors more and more, I did add some top coat to again, have a little bit more of that transparent effect so that yellow still uh, peeks through. And we're just kind of layering every everything there, um, kind of creating almost like a marble effect. Um, and then we're gonna add in some red at the very end, both inside and then on the edges to kind of create a glowing effect, which I mix with some top coat as well. And we're just gonna dab that along the edges and the blending brush works really good for this because it kind of gives it that seamless, kind of effortless uh, blending effect. And then you could just add in some more wherever you feel like you'd want to um, just add some more color. And then you can use a small brush as well anywhere that you wanna concentrate more color. Now for the fun part, we're gonna start drawing Bride of Frankenstein. So I'm drawing these kind of almost flattened circle shapes um, and I'm just filling those in. This is just gonna be the base and then we're gonna start adding in a small black circle at the top. I'm using my small detailer brush again for this because the details are so small. Um, this was definitely the brush that made it easiest to kind of add in those details. And then a very small dotting tool for a white dot at the center. And now we're going to start adding in those details um, around her eyes. So we're taking a black shading gel and just adding some outlining at the top and then just some eyelashes. Again, using that small detailing brush and just using light motions. Now I'm using a grayish black mixture to just add some more shadow at the bottom. And then we're gonna go ahead and outline her face once we've um, laid down the eyes. 
So her face shape is pretty simple. It's kind of just an oval shape with a little bit of curvature towards the bottom and a little bit of a pointed chin. Once you've laid down this color and filled it in with your white gel polish or the white gel liners, what I'm using in this case, um, you can always go back and add more definition to the face and kind of redefine any lines. And we're gonna be adding in a lot of shading and details, so it's all gonna come together at the end. I'm just gonna make sure I go around carefully in terms of the eyes and make sure we don't um, go over those accidentally. And we're gonna leave a small gap because I, I am gonna add more shadow and just depth to her eyes. We're kind of going for a realistic look, but still kind of like a cartoonish character look, but I'm really just kind of going off the reference image and doing the best I can. Um, so don't worry about those gaps around the eyes. Again, we're gonna add in some shadows, so it's all gonna get covered up. So we're going in with that grayish black mixture again, and we're gonna start adding just a thin circle, but using those small stippling motions so that it kind of blends out. You don't want it to be like a perfect circle. So this is where like, again, adding some top coat can help just to kind of give it more of that shading effect. We are going for that very gritty Universal Monsters look. So we're gonna be using a lot of gray and black. So just continuing with light stippling motions and continuing to work in an outward motion. And then we're gonna draw in her eyebrows and those are just kind of basically two slanted lines. And then for her hair, which is the most important part, I think, um, you're basically gonna draw the top of the hairline and then draw the outline um, on the inside of the face and then draw the top of her hair. Her hair is very big and it's gonna take up a, a big portion of the nail. Um, and just like the lines for the hair, you could kind of just make them random. The outline of her hair is definitely not a perfect circle. So just kind of use your brush to make like around a random outline, but still mostly circular, if that makes sense. And then we're gonna go ahead and fill that in. And you can just see how smooth these gel liners are. I really enjoyed working with them. They were super silky, but still like not runny. Um, you can just see how smooth they go on. So definitely check those out if you're in the market for a new gel, liner gel. Now we're gonna add in the, the white streak in her hair, which again has like an irregular outline and it's kind of positioned to the left, um, and then just some random more white outlines as well for the rest of her hair. For her nose, I just did a little bit of shading gel and just lightly drew the outline. I didn't wanna make it too prominent or again, like too, too, too cartoonish looking. I just felt like the shadow, you know, kind of effect was more subtle. And then for the lips, we're just using a red gel polish and just making a very simple outline um, with the top and bottom lip. Now we're gonna start adding more shading. So I'm using that grayish mixture again to just start shading the out, outline and uh, kind of the perimeter of the face. It's almost like doing makeup. You know, you could think of it as like, some of this has like the contour and then we're gonna add in highlight. So again, we're gonna go in with some more black shading gel. So I like to, I don't like to start with my darkest shading first. I like to kind of go with like the medium and then go with the darker, just so I can kind of see how things are looking. And then we're gonna add in a little bit of white at the tops um, of her cheeks and then like the center of her forehead just to add in some more highlighter, highlight bring that brightness back. Just have fun with your shading. I promise it will all come together and you will learn as you go. I'm always learning as well and kind of experiment. Now for her dress, I think that's what it is. It's basically her dress, but it kind of looks like a lab coat. Um, you're just gonna draw like almost like a turtleneck with two curved lines for the shoulders. And then I added in some red to the gray just to add in kind of a little bit of a different um, color there with a little bit more red at the bottom. And then we're gonna go ahead and fill everything in and just kind of blend everything downwards. Now I'm bringing in a little bit of that black shading gel, especially towards the bottom, just to again, add some more dimension, add some more interesting colors and effects so it doesn't look so one dimensional. This is where you can really play with the colors and instead of like doing like very hard outlines, you can just use the different Kind of transition of the colors to represent you know different parts of of your art and like different pieces so like here i'm using a black shading gel to outline everything i didn't want to use like an actual um black gel polish or black gel liner i didn't want it to be like that harsh of an outline if that makes sense it gives it more like a natural soft look um i don't know if i'm explaining it very well but um it just like depends on what you're drawing and kind of the style you're going for so now we're just gonna draw a line on the right side with some dots for the buttons of her dress slash shirt. 
Now I'm adding in a little bit more of this red color, which is um, actually a little bit of a mixture of this gel polish that I'm re releasing soon called Rose Solstice. So I'll be showing that in a little bit here, um, what that looks like, super excited to share that. And then yeah, we're just gonna keep adding in like a little bit more gray, just, you know, when you're adding in like a color like red, for example, here, you're probably gonna have to mix in a little bit more of that gray or that black, just so everything kind of blends a little bit more seamlessly and doesn't look too harsh. Or there's like no very like harsh lines between the transition of the colors. So once that's to your liking, you can go ahead and cure it and top coat it and you should end up with something like this, hopefully. So you can see a little bit of the moon in the background and I feel like the blending came out really nice on this. I actually drew Bride of Frankenstein last year, kind of in a different style, so I'll pop the picture up and you can let me know what you think. Here's a preview of that Rose Solstice color that we're gonna be releasing with our Winter Gel Polish collection next month. We're gonna be using this all throughout the set, but a lot in the next character that we're drawing, which is Dracula's daughter. So for her eyes, we're gonna start with um, also kind of a similar eye shape to what we did for Bride of Frankenstein, but it's gonna be a little bit more offset and angled. Um, and a little bit bigger. So I'm just using that mixture that had like a little bit of slight yellow in it. Um, this character is a lot more spooky, so we're gonna go a little bit more heavy with the detail. So I wanted to add a little bit of yellow undertone to her eyes. And this is what I kind of meant with a slight angle for the, for the outline of the eyes. So then we're gonna add in that rose solstice color with a dotting tool and then a black dot at the center and then a very small white dot. Um, and her eyes are very creepy looking. They're very, very red and bloodshot. So we're gonna start adding in that black shading gel with a little bit of red on the perimeter, just very, very ever so lightly with a very light touch, just to start adding in a little bit of that extra creepy effect. And then kind of similar to Bride of Frankenstein, we're gonna start adding in that shadow around her eyes. So I really just try to look at the photo and mimic some of those details as closely as I can. So for the skin tone, it's like a very bluish gray color. So I'm just gonna show you kind of in real time here how I mix that. When I mix colors, it's it's honestly an experiment. Um, so I kind of just lay out the couple of colors that I need and start mixing them until I get the desired color. Sometimes you have to add a little bit more. Like here, I had to add in a little bit more blue. It ended up being too gray. But eventually we ended up with a nice bluish gray color um, that we're gonna use for the base to outline um, her head and everything. And so her head shape is kind of like an irregular heart, but that doesn't even really explain it that well. So you can just kind of watch what I'm drawing here. But the top is kind of like the side of one heart. Um, and then her face as we're going down has kind of these curves and lines and like some sharpness to it. So you kind of just want to look at your photo and try to mimic those lines as closely as you can. So as you can see here on the left side, like as I'm drawing like her face going down the sides, there's you know some pretty exaggerated curves in there. And again, once you fill this in with the whole base color, you can definitely go back and kind of redefine those lines, make them more prominent as needed, make them thicker as needed, or make them more curved like I'm doing here. And then we're gonna go ahead and fill in that base color and then just leave a small gap around the eyes again that we will fill in with some more shadow effect. And my next, I think three Halloween tutorials are gonna be a lot more basic, very cute. So if you're feeling like that's what you wanna see is like more of a basic Halloween nail tutorial, have no fear that is coming up soon. I like to do a mixture of all types of nails, whatever I'm feeling like doing. So I know we've been hitting it pretty hard with the kind of more complicated tutorials. Um, so I'm excited to kind of just do something a little bit more simple and cute for the next few videos. With that being said, I hope these more advanced tutorials are helpful. Like I said, I'm always learning alongside with you guys as well um, and challenging myself. And I just like to share the whole process. So, um, you know, whatever type of nail style you're doing, just break it down step by step, take it piece by piece. And I promise you can do any type of nail set um, that you'd like to do. So we're gonna go ahead and fully cure the base color once we've pretty much outlined everything. And then we're gonna go in with our black shading gel and start outlining and adding that shadow effect around the eyes. I'm making it a little bit more prominent here, almost like a lopsided triangle shape. You can kind of see that point there at the left. So you can kind of think of it as like a dramatic eye shadow. So we're just gonna go ahead and add that around the eyes. Again, using very light, 
almost like tapping and stippling motions. You can always use a black gel polish with top coat or like a jelly black polish as well for that kind of um, shading effect. We're gonna go ahead and do the other eye here and I am using a small detailer brush for this just because I just wanna make sure that I'm not getting it inside the actual eye, but just on the edges. So now we're gonna start mixing a darker shade to do some of our, again, shading and kind of adding some more texture and dimension to the face. So I'm starting with kind of my medium tone here. So I add a little bit more of gray to that blue. And then once I kind of get one layer down, I'll go back in and add more. I like to kind of work my way up when it comes to adding um, you know, more color, more, more texture, more dimension, just because I feel like it can be easy to just accidentally put on too much at once. So I prefer to just kind of work my way up with multiple layers. So we're starting at the perimeter of the face and kind of concentrating it there and then feathering it inwards. So once we kind of do this with the gray mixture, we'll go back in with our actual um, black shading gel to add in kind of that second darker color and then we'll go back and add in our highlight with a lighter blue just to kind of highlight and brighten some of those areas as well um, kind of towards the center of the face so here we go with the black shading gel I'll add more top coat to this as needed um, on my palette of course um, sometimes you don't want it to be such a prominent black shadow um, so it just kind of really depends, but I feel like concentrating it at the edges and then kind of stippling it inwards works pretty well. Now we're going to do the eyebrows, which are very dramatic, two kind of thin slanted lines. So we're going to use the detailer brush for this and then adding in even more effect, uh, more uh, black gel polish under the eyes. Her eyes are honestly very scary looking, so the more kind of color and effects you can add here the better so we're gonna darken that outline up even more again using those small stippling motions and then adding just the slightest amount of kind of that reddish mixture with rose solstice kind of mixed with some top coat just to add in some more shadow like I'm saying shadow shading like every other word but that's what this set is honestly all about so and again, you wanna keep your touch very light. Now we're gonna add these kind of, I don't know what they were, they're like black tears almost. I think they were in the photo, so we're just adding those in with a very small brush. And for her nose as well, I kind of used the shading, shading effect um, and then blended that out. Now for the mouth, we're gonna draw almost like an apple shape. And we're gonna make sure that her mouth, that you make it big enough because we have to add in her fangs, right? That's kind of the most important part here. This is Dracula's daughter. So once we've got the lips outlined, I'm gonna start with the top fangs. We're gonna draw kind of the two fangs on the sides and then just kind of like a uh, line connecting them across. And then I ended up adding the kind of um, black on the inside to add in that before I added the bottom teeth. I think that worked a lot better because you want the teeth to really pop, right? And then I ended up adding this blood, which I ended up erasing. It didn't really turn out the way I wanted, but it turned out really nicely on the next character we're gonna do. So if you feel like you wanna add this and uh, you wanna leave that detail in, definitely go for it. I just, something wasn't, I didn't, there's something I just didn't like about it. So you're gonna see that I ended up erasing that but it would definitely be very fitting for this set if you wanted to add that. Now we're gonna draw her neck and her photo pretty much had like this um, red dress that she has on with like a necklace. So we're gonna end up um, adding in all those details after. So we're just gonna do like the simple black color for the neck just so we have it kind of at least posi positioned there. And then we're gonna start drawing her hair. Her hair is very long. So we're gonna start with the top outline, which is basically just a curved shape coming down the sides. And then her hair outline, sorry, her hairline um, is a very prominent widow's peak. So pretty much just following the outline of her face shape here. So this is where like getting the face shape, all the curves and lines you want in there really helps because then it makes it really easy to add in the hair. We're gonna go ahead and fill that in with just the black first, and then we'll go back and add more details.
Now using kind of a milky white mixture, we're just gonna add in some details in her hair just so it doesn't look so flat or one dimensional. And then for her dress, I'm using that rose solstice color and we're just gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of the free edge, just going around the hair. This is like a dusty rose color, but it's still very pigmented, um, but it's like a slightly muted rose color um, that's gonna be really nice for this winter collection. And then we're gonna go ahead and add some shading, of course, just around the edges and keep feathering that in. And then we're gonna start outlining the top of her dress and then just drawing in those final details and blending those out. I ended up going back and adding some highlight to her face. So this is what I kind of mean by like adding highlight, just like adding that same base color, but just brighter at the kind of center of her face where needed just to kind of add in some more detail there. And then for her necklace, just gonna do a simple kind of um, necklace like v, v outline with the medallion at the center. And then we can't forget her ears. So these are like really pointed just gonna draw them on top of her hair and then if you feel like um, you need to add a little bit more hair over you can definitely do that and then we're just gonna add in a neon green around um, I ended up drawing her a little bit bigger so I didn't have a ton of room to draw like the whole moon effect but I just wanted to add a little bit more detail at the top so that is gonna be pretty much it for Dracula's daughter so we're gonna go ahead and top coat that I think this is definitely the creepiest uh, nail of the whole set. So again, the more of a scare factor you can go for, the better with that nail. So for our last character for this nail set, we're gonna be drawing basically a mummy character. There's a name in a photo for this that I cannot recall, but I will pop up on the screen. So we're basically just drawing, starting with a skull, right? So we're gonna draw the eyes at the center, basically kind of, um, you know, circle shape, but going more tapered in towards the corners. And there's a little bit of regularity to that too. For the outline of the skull, we're using kind of a, what would you call this color? It's kind of like a beige-ish color, um, but basically a skull color, right? With like white with some yellow undertone, but we're basically gonna draw the outline of the skull. So just go to make sure you get those prominent cheekbones in there basically. So like a circle at the top, a circle at the bottom, but then make sure you get those curves in at the side. Um, and it is a little bit more elongated, right? Um, I think for this, I actually mixed the white liner gel um, with a little bit of yellow, um, but I do have like a beige gel polish that I've used before. A beige is not the right color I'm thinking of, but it's called Silky Cat from Madame Glam. That's always been kind of my go-to um, for these types of base colors. So we're just gonna go ahead and fill that in and again, leaving a small gap around the eyes. And we're gonna start mixing that same mixture of the base color with some brown. We're gonna be using actually a lot of brown for this particular character, like different shades. I had to add in a little bit of black there um, because we are again, creating a shadow around the eye. So you can see how it's kind of like similar techniques for all of the characters, um, which like, it's kind of nice because once you start drawing one character and you finish it, you kind of get the routine down and you're kind of like implementing the same techniques for some of the different ones, even though we're drawing a completely different character. We're using kind of the same techniques, right? We're using that same, um, you know, kind of shadow around the eyes, same stippling motion. So that's kind of the nice thing when you're doing, you know, um, a specific style, you can kind of just, you know, keep recreating some of those same effects on different characters. And the pressure of your brush is so important here. I know I keep reiterating that, but for like really small details like this, you, the pressure is like so, so light. You can see I'm really bracing my pinky against, um, you know, my hand there just to keep everything super stabilized and just keep those touches as light as possible. Now we're gonna add in some of those darker details. So we gotta make sure we have some of those more hollow, um, I don't even know what the right word is, but it's basically we're drawing a skeleton, right? So we got to add in some of those lines under the eyes. And then for the nose, I pretty much just did like a very skinny triangle, but it has these kind of two rounded circles at the bottom. And then the mouth um, is basically going to follow the, we're going to go up to those cheekbones that we drew 
but then it's gonna have a divot kind of at the bottom where the nose is, and then we're gonna draw the bottom of the mouth, which is kind of like a rectangle shape. So hopefully you can just follow along with what I'm showing on the camera. Um, it's a lot easier to explain than like in words because these are like not exact shapes, but you just wanna make sure that this takes up a prominent portion of the bottom of the mouth. And the teeth um, are basically small little squares on the bottom and longer squares at the top. Just want to make them very irregular shaped. We're not drawing veneers, right? We are drawing uh, mummy teeth. So I was kind of laughing to myself when I was drawing this because I really had to tell myself like, these are not supposed to be perfect, right? They're not supposed to look like veneers. So just draw them like crooked with gaps in between, um, discolored, they're not supposed to be perfect white and it'll all come together. Now we're gonna draw the mummy, the wraps. Um, there's gotta be another word for this, but basically like the mummy bandage wrap. So I just drew like the outlines of the rectangles and kind of the different angles. And then I'm using a pinkish brown mixture to just start laying in the color, the base color of those. So you just wanna draw like wraps going at different angles and like some hanging off the head, one going across the mouth. You can do it whichever way you'd like. And then once again, start adding in your shading. So we're going in with a darker brown color now with a little bit of red mixed in. And then we're gonna do that on all of the kind of bandages that we drew. And then we're gonna go in with a little bit of red just to add in that bloody extra creepy effect. So this is where I switched to my detailer brush just to make it a little bit more um, defined and just have a little bit more control of where my brush is. But then you can end up like blending those out wherever you feel like you wanna spread that color out a little bit more. Now we're just gonna outline those um, basically rectangles that we had drawn in with shading gel. So you can see again, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, but you just wanna make sure they're overlapping um, and going in different directions. Make sure you outline all of the ones you drew, including the ones on the side and across the mouth. And you can outline the rest of the face as well here. I'm gonna go back and add the shading on the skull now. I figured I'd do it after I drew in the wraps just because like a lot of the head was gonna get covered up. So I'm using that darker brown mixture along the cheekbones and just bringing that in. So we're not trying to cover up that base color completely, right? We're just trying to add another layer of color into it. And then we're gonna go in with our darker shading color here, which is kind of a blackish gray mixture and just concentrate that on the edges again as well. And then we're gonna go ahead and bring in our highlight back, of course. So a little bit of a brighter version of that base color just along the inner parts of the face. Now we're gonna draw in her hair. So kind of similar to Dracula's daughter, just starting in with kind of like the rounded top. And she does kind of have these kind of, I got cut off there for a second, but she does have kind of these bangs um, in the photo. So I ended up drawing those at the top of the hair. Just want to go ahead and fill in the rest of that outline. So just like Dracula's daughter, her hair is pretty long. And I am using that black gel liner for this. It is just so silky and smooth. I was really impressed and had a lot of fun using it for this set. It just made it so much easier. And you can just see how pigmented it is. Like it's just filling in like so easily. Just adding in a little bit more wispiness there. And then at the ends of her hair as well, you want to make sure you don't make it like look too blocky, right? So just kind of use this motion here and it'll make her hair look, you know, um, not so like blocky and like uniform. Use a bluish gray mixture to add in kind of the details on her hair, just to add in some more color, just on the tops of the bangs and the side, just very subtle. And then for her dress, we're gonna use a gold chrome gel paint and a turquoise. So I'm gonna start with just basically a elongated U shape and start filling that in around her hair. And then we're gonna go ahead and basically thicken that shape as well because her dress is basically a combination of these two colors, kind of like with geometric shapes. So like up here, for example, we're just gonna go ahead and draw like um, the middle, the turquoise is gonna be like that triangle in the middle. So we're basically just outlining the sides of this. I think the top of this is actually supposed to be like a neck, like jewelry piece. So you could definitely add in like more detail here. I think at this point I was kind of ready to be done with this set. Um, so I kind of made it a little bit more simple. So yeah, we're just adding in that turquoise here at the center and that's gonna be kind of like her neck piece, her jewelry piece there. And then we're gonna go ahead and draw in the rest of her dress, which is basically just gonna be like the top, but inverted. So yeah, basically just concentrate on making those triangle shapes and making sure like the whole pattern is there with the gold and the turquoise.
Here I did want to add in some of that blood just like around kind of like the bottom of the face. So I'm using my detailer brush, using a stippling motion, and then I'm going to start using that to drag down and just draw like those streaks. The key to this is like the thinner you want your line to be, you need to kind of lift up your lift up your brush and use like very, very light pressure. So you basically just want to start like dragging that down with like very light pressure and it should draw those streaks really nicely. And then just adding in that neon yellow at the top, just like we did for the, the nail just before this, just so we kind of have that uniform background, even though most of the nail is covered up. So now we're gonna go ahead and cure everything and top coat and we're done. Just the pinky is left, which is gonna be a lot more simple. Just some cute little bats with the same kind of sponge uh, blood effect. So here's another look at the final result of that before we move on to the very last nail. So we're gonna draw two angled bats. So starting with just like two triangles at the top and we're basically just gonna start adding in some thickness to those lines and then drawing the body, which is basically just a curved shape. We're gonna go ahead and connect all that. And then for the wings, you wanna draw an angled line and then a curved line with two points basically. And you wanna make sure the point closer to the body is longer. That's kind of the key there. And then you wanna make sure that those lines connecting the wings are as curved as possible. And we're gonna go ahead and repeat that. So kind of a slanted line, draw the point, draw the second point and kind of connect it with the curved line. So like, a, like I mentioned there, you wanna make sure that that first point closer to the body is longer. So you can elongate it just like I did there. Two triangles at the top connected with the curved line and then the body is basically just like an oval shape the diagonal lines for the wings the more slanted you make the wings like you don't want them coming out straight the the more you'll get of like that bat look and then again you just want to make sure your connecting lines are as curved as possible for the wings i feel like um, if you make them too straight um, they won't look very much like a wing so you can see i'm being pretty dramatic with the curved lines there and you can always go back and kind of redefine them and of course make that first point uh, longer. And we're just going to use our brush to add in that same blood effect. It works really well with the manicure brush so I would highly recommend trying that out if you haven't. Once we top coat that we are done so I'll show the final nail set here in a second. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this Halloween Horror Nights themed nail tutorial and stay tuned for our nail products releasing very soon here in November. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.